Um, but this is what's so fun and so special. And like, this is what we've built here. And this is, these are the moments you dream of. And, you know, obviously our fans were incredible. Um, it kind of feels like you're living in a little bit of delusion because this is just so awesome. And like, honestly, if you would have told me that before my college career started, I would have laughed in your face and been like, no, you're insane. Uh, just to be in the same realm of all these players that have been so successful, whether it's Pete or whether it's Kelsey Plum or Lynette Woodard, like all these people have just given so much to the game. So, um, you know, hopefully somebody comes after me and breaks my records and I can be there supporting them. And um, that's what makes the game of basketball so fun. But yeah, it'll definitely hit me at some point. She's so good. Caitlin Clark now stands alone as the all-time D1 points leader, but it's not her only entry in the record book. She also holds the Big Ten record for three-pointers and 28 shy of the D1 women's record, and she's the only woman or men's player with 3,000 points and 1,000 assists. Dre, I'm going to start with you on this one. What do you think Caitlin Clark's legacy is? Wow. I mean, Caitlin Clark is the best scorer that the college game has seen. She simply is. It's her ability to finish inside the paint. It's her deep range. It's her logo threes. It's the way that she shoots, the way she pulls up off the dribble, going full speed. I know she broke the record on a free throw, and that's fine. She's supposed to hit free throws. But Caitlin Clark can score in a wide variety of ways, going left, going right, off the dribble, full speed. She's the best scorer the game has seen. That's why she has passed the record on the men's and women's side. And people talk about how, you know, Pete didn't have a three-point line, and I understand that. But because there's a three-point line and Caitlin's range has shown throughout her career, she's the best scorer, in my opinion, and she is the most impactful player the college game has seen. It's in part because she's been there for four years. Men's college players that come on the scene and set records and score a ton, they don't stay for four years. That's not how it works on the men's side. Caitlin Clark is the most impactful player the college game has seen. There's a magnetism to her, and I think that that's the part that can't be ignored here. You know, you could do great, great things on the collegiate level um, in any sport, whether it's women or men's, and people will notice it, people will pay attention to it, they'll record, they'll chronicle it, uh, but when you are a figure that seems and appears to embrace it all with such class and dignity and in the same breath going out there on a night in, night out basis and just performing on an elite level where you're the focus, everybody's coming at you, particularly when you consider what she did this season in the aftermath of losing in the national championship game to Angel Reese and LSU and Kim Mulkey and all of them, to come back this year and perform the way that she performed. This is the amazing part of all of this, Shannon and Andrea. Not only I've called her the Steph Curry of women's basketball, period, because I firmly believe that when I saw her pulling up from the parking lot for crying out loud, I'm like, that's who she is, okay? So I give her that love and respect, and obviously everybody knows I had the pleasure of meeting her and doing an event with her, and damn near 11,000 people showed up. It was bananas out there. It was crazy, okay? So that was a really, really enlightening experience as well in terms of the love and affection and adulation that they have for her. But then to know that you're a target, that you have that target on your back, and then to show up this year and perform the way that you did. Hey, y'all, this is the regular season. You still got the NCAA tournament coming. This girl's going after a national championship. We're literally sitting here right now and saying to ourselves we have no choice. As large as she is, as, and she just surpassed Shador Sanders in terms of NIL money and all of this other stuff. I mean, the, the money that she's raking in. You got the WNBA, max deals are like 241000 She's already worth over $3 million. This is who she is. The tournament hasn't even started yet. What if she wins the national title? Woo. What if this, what if this, if this young lady wins the national title? And what if she does it by averaging over 30? Lord, I, I, I'm just saying, I've seen a lot. Listen, there's a lot of great ones. I mean, we talk about the days uh, of Cheryl Miller and Cheryl Swoops and Cynthia Cooper and Lisa Leslie, and the list goes on and on. You know, Della Don and everybody. I mean, um, don't get me don't, don't Diana Taurasi, let me, Sue Burr, let me not forget the ladies. You know I love them. The whole bit. This girl, Caitlin Clark, I'm, she has put everybody on notice, and she's putting women's basketball on the map in a way that we have not seen before, y'all. Look out. Look out. Well, Stephen, there happened to be a historian of sports, and I go back to when 
La Tech won the first two national championships. And I remember when uh, USC took them down. And I remember the great Texas team that took them down. And then all of a sudden you had the run with Tennessee and obviously UConn. And I've seen a lot of women play. And I've seen a lot of men play. She's the most complete offensive player in the college game has ever seen. No one could score the ball like she could and facilitate like she can. I've seen guys, uh, uh, Trey, Trey Young led the nation in scoring and assists. LaSalle Thompson, Xavier McDaniel led the nation in scoring and rebounding. We've never seen someone that could put the ball in the basket like she can and assist the ball like she can. She's, she's box office. She's the most impactful. And look, I understand social media has a lot to do with this, because. but if you look at it, Stephen A., Andrea, as we sit here right now, I can name five women quicker than I can name five men in college basketball. We yeah. haven't even mentioned the men's game. I That's couldn't right. name you five guys that play college basket right now, basketball right now, but I can name you Juju Watkins. I can name oh, you Angel Reese. I can name you Caitlin Clark. I can give you Cameron Brink. I can give you the big, the uh, young lady in South Carolina. I can't name five guys that play in college basketball, and I'm glad to see the evolution and people start to gravitate towards the women game. But when you watch her and you mention all the greats, from Cheryl Miller, Clarissa Davis, and all those, uh, Tarasi and Maya Lynette Moore, Wooder. and, and, and Lynette Woodard, the great Kansas player. And without Lynette, you know, Lynette Woodard gets thrust back into the spotlight because of Clay, Caitlin Clark. People forgot about her. She was a Harlem Globetrotter. Stephen A., man, to watch this young lady play in the range in which she can shoot it, and she can take you off the dribble, she can put the ball on the floor, three-level player, she, you follow, she's going to go to the line and make them. Man, I'm glad a chance I got an opportunity to witness. And look at the people that you got going to a game. Yeah. Travis uh, uh, Scott, he wins. Hey, hey, hey man, I'm gonna need, I might need that jersey. Get I'm that. mad I wasn't there yesterday. Seriously, yes. if I'm being honest. That's what, uh, that's what she's doing for the game. Shamiqua holds claw. We've had some great player, women players, but with the social, the advent of social media now, it's hard for me to say someone has been more impactful than what she's done over the last two years. She's sensational, and she's handled it with grace. She's handled it with dignity. She, she's an easy root for. Hey. I'm glad that I got an opportunity. Probably won't get a chance to see a play in person, but I'm glad an opportunity got to see a play on television. Because, like I said, I go back to La Tech when they were winning it, and the Texas team that took them down. The U.S. You actually USC got taken down by Texas, and then we had that great run of Tennessee in the '80s and '90s, and then UConn came onto the scene, and we know what's happened since then. The Baylor team with Kim Mulkey, but Stephen A. Andrea, this young lady here, Caitlin Clark, boy, special. Special. She's easy on the eyes. Shannon, She's it's... easy on the eyes. Because when you see it, your eyes don't lie. I see better than I hear. I hear what people tell me, but I know what I saw. Listen, right on, Shannon, it's hard for you to say anybody has been more impactful because nobody has been more impactful. It just hasn't happened. And the thing about Caitlin Clark, for me, one, it was so special to see the Iowa crowd give Maya Moore and Lynette Woodard standing ovations. Maya and what she's yeah. done for the game, Lynette Woodard and what she's done for the game, to watch that crowd, a sold-out crowd, cheer for those two pillars of the women's game, it was a very special moment. For me, when you talk about goats in college basketball, if Caitlin wins a championship, it is not just that she won a championship. It's that she won a championship as the only five-star recruit on this Iowa team. We're not talking about Iowa in any conversation if Caitlin's not on this team and you can't replace Caitlin with anyone else in the country on this team and expect them to have the same level of success. Right. That's what sets Caitlin apart. The point differential when she's on the floor is 31. When she's off the floor, it's five. If she goes on to win a championship, she is in the GOAT conversation. I know teams have won four. Brianna Stewart led an elite UConn team yeah, we forgot for four. Yeah. We've never seen that before. Exactly. We've, but we've they got seen 10 five stars. teams win back to back to back. We've seen teams, right? We've seen collective trios. We've seen collective mm -hmm. duos win multiple championships. We've never seen one player lead a team with no other five stars to a national championship you know while what? setting and passing men's and women's records. We haven't seen it's, it. Andrea, did, I want to throw this by you before we go. I just thought about this. You know what this kind of reminds me of? It, sort of, just a little bit, just a little bit. 
It reminds me. Is it an NFL me, reference? Nope. It is not. It is not. Okay. It okay. reminds me of Larry Bird when he was coming out of Indiana State. He was so prolific. He was he was phenomenal. He was balling, and he had to go up against Magic at Michigan Kelsey. State with Kelsey and those boys, you know, and obviously we saw what Magic and those boys did. But the kind of momentum she's building now that she's about to enter the NCAA tournament, now it's not just about her record, y'all, because we know how great she is, and she's and now she's going to the WNBA and the Indiana Fever already telling, you know, putting tickets on sales, get your tickets now. You know, the <laughs> N- N- WNBA draft is only 46 days away at the time. They did all of that. All right, now that's fine. All of that's great and dandy. Now it's the NCAA tournament, and the backdrop is you lost the national championship last year to LSU. Imagine if you get back to that spot, okay? Imagine if it's LSU again, although I suspect it will be South Carolina, although I suspect it will be Dawn Staley and the crew waiting there for them. But I'm telling you right now, if you sit, if she goes up there, it reminds me of Bird going into that national championship game against Magic in Michigan State, the kind of publicity, the notoriety, the hype that was associated with him because it was him and everybody else. Michigan State had a crew with Magic. It was him and everybody else. We're going to see now. This is that kind of comparison, and I love it. You know what? If she were to win the national championship, guys, she's going to have to do what Cheryl Swoops did. You remember Cheryl Swoops took that Texas Tech team? And you remember that? uh, What, she had 48 in the championship game? But through that tournament, she was dropping like 30. And yeah. she's going. And Caitlin Clark is going yeah. to need to have a have games like that throughout. She's averaging, I, I think, 31, 32 right now. Mm-hmm. 32. But to get in the championship game, she's going to have to do what Cheryl Swoops did. I think against Ohio State, when I think yeah. she dropped 48 in the championship game, yeah. leading the nation in scoring and assists. Uh, yeah, it would certainly be huge. Uh, Drea, I also the only mention- player to do that, Stephen A. Yeah. Uh, you guys absolutely killed it on game day uh, yesterday leading into that game. It was really cool to see Caitlin meet Maya Moore because that was, you know, her idol. So it was really cool. Yeah.